The residue theorem in complex analysis is this seemingly complicated formula here to compute the integral of a complex function. So today we're going to be doing a deep dive to find out what each part of it means. So the first issue with the residue theorem is that we have a complex contour gamma that is not just a strict set of integration bounds. So what we need to do is we need to reparameterize in this case in terms of a circle and its angle. So the circular contour is now in terms of its angle when we reparameterize it to t, let's say, and that's between 0 and 2 pi for a circle. So this allows us to easier evaluate the integral in this case. So the reparameterization gamma is now terms in theta with r e to the i theta. And as you can see, the, re the z wraps around the circle. And we also, in general, have to adjust for the new theta dependent integral. So this is where the 2 pi i on the outside actually comes from is this circular contour here. And for the residues, the residue, all the residues are talking about are the holes or discontinuities that are inside of the complex function that we are trying to integrate. So in this case, inside the contour, we have, we have poles, we call them, A1, A2, A3. There can be one pole or there can be as many as possible. But this alludes to the goal of this integral is to, is to look at these poles and look at the behavior of the function around these poles. And so complex integration is the only way to do this. So that's the reason we have the sum of residues of f. So we take each residue and to remind you, residues, we're talking about holes in the graph. So those are in terms in the denominator, such as uh, z minus 1 or z minus 3. And when we multiply this sum by 2 pi i, we reparameterized it as a contour integral. How do you actually compute the residue? So computing the residue is... Fair, looks fairly complicated. The most important aspect, though, is the limit. The reason we take the limit is because we are analyzing the behavior around the pole. We're not analyzing it at the pole since it can't actually touch the pole. Now, the most confusing term, I would say, comes from 1 over n minus 1 factorial. This comes from the Lorenz series here, and our residue is at c sub negative 1. And the reason this is, is because this is the only non-vanishing term from the Lorenz series when we after we take the integral. So our c minus 1, and so this here is the n minus first term. And so we get that c sub negative 1 is equal to the residue formula. So that's how we know that C sub negative 1 is the residue. So here's an example. Here we have a pole at 1. If we plug in all of our information and slash that pole in half and take our derivative of our function here, and let's just say our function is e raised to the z, we take the derivative of e to the z, which is e, to the z and then we plug in one after we plug in one we get e to the first which is e and then two pi i times e is equal to two pi i e so this result is important because it tells us how the function is going to behave around the pole in this case this pole is being z equals one because that creates a discontinuity this is my first animation style video, and I hope you all liked it. Like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell, and comment some ideas you have for me.
because I love to take viewer suggestions. I will see you all later and goodbye.